In this video, you'll learn seven easy ways to live a healthy life. Number seven, consume less carbohydrates. A low carbohydrate diet, rich in organic vegetables, healthy fats, protein, and moderate amounts of organic fruits is an excellent weight loss and management approach. Lowering glucose levels, improving blood lipid profiles, and decreasing the risk of major diseases. Additionally, it's crucial to significantly cut down or completely remove sugar, processed, and fried foods from our diets. A considerable number of people may also find substantial health benefits in reducing or entirely cutting out gluten from their eating habits. Number six, exercise more. Number six, exercise more. Studies have shown that prolonged sitting can lead to heart disease and early death while a sedentary lifestyle is linked to type 2 diabetes, dementia, and obesity. If going to the gym and working out or sports don't appeal to you, having an active lifestyle can be as simple as taking a daily walk for at least 20 minutes, and you can increase the intensity of the exercise by swinging your arms or holding a small weight in each hand to elevate your heart rate. Remember, prevention is better than cure, and regular exercise can go a long way in warding off many health issues. While doctors excel in treating and managing diseases, and you'd certainly wanna be in a top tier US hospital for any medical emergency, many doctors are often preoccupied with managing and curing illnesses rather than preventing them in the first place. Unfortunately, mainstream doctors aren't quite as good at preventing illness. A lot of them don't even know where to begin. Number five, change your diet. Stop eating fast food, fried food, processed food, sugar-sweetened drinks, such as soda, and any other food sweetened with sugar. Instead, eat a low-carbohydrate diet to avoid adding unnecessary weight. Excessive weight leads to obesity, which contributes to heart diseases, cancer, and death. If you are a parent, monitor your child's diet by minimizing the consumption of sugar. Obese children are more likely to suffer from low self-esteem and depression compared to their healthier peers. That said, avoid preserved food. Food preservatives are likely carcinogenic, which means they have the potential to cause cancer. Some food preservatives found in the linings of food and beverage cans are believed to promote breast and prostate cancer. Speaking of diet, it's important to check the amount and type of oil you consume. An imbalance in the type of oil you consume can make the body tissues less protective against harmful pathogens, including bacteria and viruses. The response by the body tissues to pathogens is known simply as inflammation. Inflammation plays a primary role in diseases that previously had not been considered inflammatory at all, including heart disease and other vascular diseases such as dementia and type 2 diabetes. Controlling inflammation starts by correcting the imbalance in our diets between omega-6 and omega-3 oils. The ratio in the standard American diet, for example, is about 20 to 1 in favor of omega-6. The ideal balance, however, is 1 to 1. This means an ideal American should add more omega-3 and reduce their intake of omega-6. Number four, avoid excess sugar. Research has shown that excess sugar depresses immunity, causes attention disorders, increases the output of stress hormones, and promotes obesity, type two diabetes, and heart disease. In addition, too much sugar can cause serious damage to the brain. In other words, keep sugar off your table, keep sugar-sweetened drinks out of the house. The average child in a middle-class family consumes 32 teaspoons of added sugar daily, 10 more than the average adult. If your kids like fruit juice, dilute it with water and avoid eating processed foods if you can. But if you have to, read the labels first. Some peanut butter brands, for example, include only one ingredient, while other brands include sugar and salt, plus chemical preservatives. Number three, avoid stress. Stress makes you vulnerable to diseases such as cancer by weakening your immune system. Stress can also lead to dementia in old people and difficulties with school and children. Deep breathing exercises and meditation can help you avoid stress. In addition, exercise reduces anxiety and keeps the heart fit. With the rising cost of living, access to sustainable medical care is becoming unbearable for most people. Prevention, as I have said, is the safest bet. The U.S. is expected to spend at least $2.3 trillion by 2030 on treating diseases. This is an increase of 550% in just 17 years. Without prevention, medical expenses will drive the U.S. economy into bankruptcy. Number two, get enough sleep. 
Not getting enough sleep is a major cause of car accidents, industrial mishaps, medical errors, and various workplace incidents. Additionally, not getting enough sleep heightens the risk of obesity, hypertension, heart disease, and even cancer. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report that as many as 75 million American adults are affected by sleep deprivation. And men experiencing sleep issues have double the risk of developing prostate cancer compared to those who sleep well. And as for children, not getting enough sleep often results in poor school performance. So if you want to get better sleep, it's advisable to avoid relying on sleep medications. Watching television in bed should be avoided and creating a dark, quiet environment in the bedroom can be beneficial. It's also recommended to refrain from consuming alcohol or caffeine at least two hours before bedtime. Additionally, establishing a regular sleep schedule, ensuring a comfortable sleeping environment, and engaging in relaxing activities before bed can further enhance sleep quality. Regular physical activity during the day can also promote better sleep, but it's best to avoid vigorous exercise close to bedtime. Number one, avoid excess gluten. Gluten is basically a mixture of two proteins present in cereal grains, especially wheat. It interferes with the absorption of nutrients and causes digestive problems. To find out if you are gluten sensitive, stop eating gluten for a couple of weeks and see how you feel. If you have more energy and sleep better, you'll probably have some level of gluten intolerance. If you are constantly exhausted, it's time you stop eating wheat products such as bread and pizza. Managing your health is your responsibility and not necessarily your doctors. You can live a longer, healthier, and happier life if you take your health seriously. The time to get started is now. Also, feel free to share this video with your friends. After all, you may just change their life. That said, thanks for watching and don't forget to like the video and subscribe.